Good morning folks, look what came already, it happened very quick, especially interesting for my patrons of course, because this is a patron bow. Welcome back to the next bow review, and as you can read, it's a Paragon bow, and is the one you voted in the poll, the Khan. And there's a lot to cover, Robert gave me a lot of information, so stay tuned. And this one guy who doesn't like unboxing because he thinks while I unbox I will lose the war or something, comment, skip forward. Then you miss all the information I tell you while I unbox it. But hey, it's not me. You find it boring. So, what do we get? This is a bow, makes me excited. So, look at this. Nothing else. So, and unboxing doesn't take that long this time. Of course, I need to unbox it gently because I need to box it again very soon and I do, do this review now before I do any other review like Sarah said because this bow will go to one of you patrons and I want to make sure that you get it under your Christmas tree so that's why I hurry up a bit let's see if I can get this right off here like this see nice so I will pack it properly again then, don't worry dear patron, who will get this bow. What do we get? A bow, a string, a sleeve and a documentation. The can fills the gap from Paragon bows between the rider as the short, uh, the rider as the longest straw and the Solak as the shortest straw and this one is just in between the warranty booklet is new never saw this before and you see here stringing methods and stuff and on the back you have your information which is the serial number and then you have 47 pound at 28 at 31 the bow has 60 pounds and the recommended brace at the six and a half inches it's quite low but we get to this in a sec and the recommended Safe arrow weight is 9 grams per pound, I should wear my glasses. And the recommended minimum arrow weight is 7.5 grams per pound. So I didn't know what poundage is. I simply brought a few of my arrows. They are from 325 to 515 grain. And then we see what we get. I need to do then the calculation, but I do that later. So you get a warranty card. Oh, 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 oh. That's a short one. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, look, we have a reinforcement here. Mariner style. Nice. Wow. wow. Ladies and gentlemen. Ah, I'm in love again. Look at this. So, and I can tell you now a lot if you want. Holy cow. Look, relatively wide limbs. Handle is, wow, very pointy. You have uh, arrow pass. And a stable core is in the back. Wow. No string pad needed, nothing. So this is a little reassemblance of Turkish or Tatar bows. But it's still a Mongolian bow. <coughs> and I tell you now, while I show you some nice detail photos, of what Robert wrote. Uh, Central Asia is a true melting pot of Turco, Mongol and Persian cultures where the Timurid Empire rose to power in the 14th to 15th century. The bow is inspired by the Tsagan Khat and Omnogov Mongolian conquest area findings but with an added touch of Turkish and Persian design elements making it a unique in-betweener. The Khan is using the same proven technology as our flagship model rider but in a shorter, more compact form. Short limbs and long sear sections are providing an excellent drawing experience combined with speed and stability. So this bow is meant to be a Timurid bow. The shape is following the conquest era Mongol bows, but with a modified rigid section, which looks like the latter Mughal bows. When you have the bow in your hand, you will be able to spot that the rigid sear section here is actually a bit longer than the bending working limb section, which in turn provides a beautiful shape of the bow when it is drawn to at least 27-28 inches. The working limb section is center tapered to enhance 
the look of the bent limbs and also to aid the smooth drawing experience. The long rigid tears, short limbs combo also have drawbacks of course. Comes with the draw length, the bow has a maximum draw length of 32 inches but in reality 31 inches is comfortable to draw in Robert's experience. The bow is relatively short and never meant to be a long draw monster so if you want to have a bow from Robert which draws more get the riser, rider. If you're happy with the Turkish, get the Solak, and this is just the bow for in between. It's a Paragon Khan, a Mongol laminated bow. Has a strong length of 120 centimeters. Is unstrung 52.5 inches or 134 centimeters. Has a length strong of 45 inches or another string is 45 inches or 115 centimeters. Bracelet six and a half is 16.5 centimeters. You can have this bow from 28 to 60 pounds. And the max draw, I said, is 32, but the comfortable draw length is 31. Then we have already the grain per pound, I told you. This is what I got from Robert as information. And the price is 450 British pounds. 51. Knock to knock. Arrow pass is really narrow. I like that. Because we have a very low bracelet. 21 millimeters, that's a nice. Oh, look at this ball. Ah, we have extremely long sears. And then this short bending section, that might be something. <laughs> Patrons, this is another bow, you know. Leave it to me. Don't vote for you, don't, don't, don't participate in the giveaway. But it's okay, I got the Zaras in, fine, fine. Three inches. 13 pounds. Fine. Stringing, even if you have these extreme ears, is easy. <laughs> it's a really short one. Look at this pretty bow. Wow. And here, these reinforcements make sense, like we saw on the marina bows and in clear, like fishing line, just to make sure. So let's wait quickly, then we have this out of the way. And you don't have to adjust anything on the string. 420. He said that the string is exactly the length you need for the prey side required. Six and a half. It's, you know, it's Robert. 47 pounds at 28. Oh, this is my morning workout. So are you ready, boys and girls? Girls and boys, ladies first. Bow straight. This <laughs> Unexpected, stiff, wow, handle feels awesome, really awesome. So are you ready? But you feel, the, <laughs> but you feel the heavy, the heavy sears a little, so do you feel it? Nice, look at this, <laughs> the draw is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, when you don't need string pads, wow. So 28, 29, 30, 31, 32-ish, but you feel it after 31, it gets stiff. Holy, 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 let's shoot. As I didn't know the draw weight, I end up now with a little too lightweight error. So my sum goes at 400 grain, this would be 6.6. .6, so they are a little too lightweight because minimum is 7.5. So we don't draw fully now. I don't have heavy arrows for this one. <laughs> Has a little noise. Ooh, almost Robin Hood. So these arrows are a little too lightweight. <laughs> Out of the boxer group. So with these arrows, you feel it. They are 550, is 8.6 six or something so they are just in between the minimum and the recommended gram per pound but they are two weeks bind they are not for a 60 pound so they won't fly properly but only that we see what the weight is doing <laughs> nice so we give it a little warm-up so we only draw 28 29 and I need a thumb ring. Oh, it's a nice bow. Join today with a thumb ring. 
from BQPX India, the leather one, and this is from Oliver, one of my Facebook friends. He invented this protector here. So when you do string twist and something that you don't get these blisters on your index finger, we try this now directly too. So oh, I didn't shoot with thumbring for a while. And this leather protection feels good. Let's see what we get. So, so far the bow feels good up to 30 inches and it gets a little stiff, so I guess we need some shots with it. Oh, what? <laughs> a beast. Yeah, start spending more. Nice, nice, nice. And with 8.6 the bow just feels fine, so there is no problem. You don't feel, you feel a little kick still because you have really massive sears and a very short bending section but it's not annoying so that's fine but only the arrows are not they're a little too not stiff enough let's see on 20 if i get them to 20. Oh, but it's a catapult you see that wow feels so good so Arrow pass is very narrow. I need to compensate for that. My arrows go way to the left. <laughs> the bone needs a few shots until you get used to it. Let's check the curves quickly. I put some leather underneath, Robert. Listen to your advice that you don't scratch the bow. We don't have to check the measurement because when Robert tells you it's 47, it's 47 and at 460, so I... We had this, we don't have to do that. We save time. Time for something else. The straw is so smooth. The 28 is nice. But you see already the limbs coming backwards. So, where's my. There it is. And you're already 28. 60 degree string angle. So, you don't want to max this bow way more out so in this draw length it just looks fine and then it gets a little stiff behind beyond 28 so you feel it and you see that it's 13 pounds at three inches it's more than four inches per uh, four pounds per inch so up to here it's nice and here it's also until there it's 30 31 maybe but he said so, so it's fine. And I think this bow still needs a few shots. What a pretty bow. Well, now I think I don't max the bow out regarding draw length, so... Take the speed test now with a grain of salt. Might not be the final solution. I think this bow simply needs a few shots. Let's see. That's 30, 30 inches. Oops, 140, I don't think so. A bit more. 157. That's 30 inches. <coughs> 158. Oh, 156. This is how you ruin your wood arrows. Yep, 150. So. I ruined my wood arrows now. I don't have heavier arrows, so I can't tell. So, and another day, the speed test yesterday left me a little buggled because I didn't have the right weight. Now I found the right weight. They are 540 grain, which means they're exactly nine grain per pound. Now we see what they do and how they fly. Hundred seventy-nine. Hundred seventy-eight. I'm still not completely at full draw, so I maybe throw thirty inches. Hundred eighty-two. So this is what you get with nine grain. 
and they're 460 grain so this is closest to 7.5 so we have maybe at 7.6 grain per pound so this is a minimum recommended by Robert Seventy one, same. Ustro. Hi, hi, hi. And it's, it doesn't measure, huh? Why don't you measure? One hundred eighty five. We do this again. One hundred seventy three was not full through. That doesn't sound good. 177. So 180 foot ish per, per second. Um, but he said I should try my most lightweight and my most heavy arrows. Only for test purpose. These are the flying arrow, flying living arrow, flying quiver, flying sword, <laughs> living arrow, living arrow arrows. Hey yeah, Cosma, they are 380 gray. 196. 190. And 189. So, no problem. You could reach 200, but then the air is a little too lightweight and this bow is not really made for shooting extremely lightweight arrows because of the massive sears. Long, small, lightweight sears like a Korean or Turkish, easier with these ones. You need a little weight on the arrows. And one thing, second day already, throw experience gets better. So what you need to keep in mind, this thing is stiff in the beginning. So and that's why my initial review here is as stiff as it is. When you shoot this bow, a lot of times it will for sure get very, very smooth. And I think then 31 is no problem anymore right now. Still stiff, but you can feel it day by day. It gets more smooth. Now I scratch the arrow pass and then do you really see it? Hmm? Do you? Oh, look at this side, I scratched it now, so. So if you are a horseback guy and your draw is something 28, 30 inches, awesome. Like this works fine. Like this, you can make it work a little tougher because we have this bump here. But if you want to shoot your Kasai style and shoot Mediterranean, no problem with this bow, it does everything you want. For me personally, I would go with the rider, even if the rider is not as pretty as this one, but it draws a little more. So this one after 30 inches gets a little stiff and I like to draw a little more, but you know that when you buy this bow. So it's not a negative thing, it's simply a matter of fact. Let's see. Look at these curves. So this is now 30. And then it gets stiff, so I'm not sure if I will ever reach 32. But kicks arrows away. That's nice. And it feels like it bends now a bit easier. So this bow again needs a few shots, but it gets a little warmed up. And then we might get to 32. But if you reach a solid 31, it's fine. It's a bow you don't want to put out of your hands. It's a, it's a really beautiful bow and it's an awesome shooter. So this is, if you draw something up to 30 inches, this bow, wow. And it has a punch. <laughs> wow. This is a little too lightweight, but now it's not that annoying anymore. And <laughs> Katra, string twist, everything works with this bow. And vibration, <laughs> nothing. You feel it directly in the handle for one second, two seconds. 
and then it's gone. So you only feel this heavy sears coming forward. It's almost like a manjo without a string bridge. Then you feel it a little, but... <laughs> so, and consider that patrons... Oh, shit, I should see. He's awesome. Uh, it's at full draw 60 pounds, so if you're not there yet, maybe don't participate in the giveaway, but that's up to you. Give it to someone who can shoot it. Look at this there. And then it gets stiff, but it doesn't feel awkward when it gets back there to where it gets a little hard. So it's still doable. So, so maybe we have to redo the speed test a bit later when the bow bends a bit more. This is now the initial uh, bow review. Mm, might be worth being updated. So until here feels fine and then it gets too stiff. And of course this bow is a little loud with two lightweight arrows, but that's normal. But the groups we shoot with this bow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a pretty bow, as you saw in the close-ups. And it's well made. This is interesting how he made it. Awesome. So, look at this. Huh? extremely small here reinforced then this is a little you know like like tatar or turkish then you have here this small bump down there as a reinforcement here and stopping this more from bending getting more pressure here on the limb which is tapered in the middle so it bends nicer then it comes in this beautiful handle this handle is really nice and feels really really good and then it goes over there. So it's really a short bow. You need to get used to it. You think it's a short bow. The weight is fine, but when you move it, you feel obviously these long sears here moving. So you feel that there is something working on top and on the bottom. But it's fine, but it doesn't do anything with katra, nothing. So it's completely doable. You only feel it, so it's not when you would compare to a Korean or a Tatar, where you only have this thick and all this material is not there, would be a little different. But this one, and the handle is just, my hand is simply baked into it. So this is, or the, 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 the handle is simply baked into my hand. It's just perfect. This is a perfect handle. You have it here on your pressure point. Here you have your fingers around and then look at this. Yeah, it's natural. Stable core is on the back, that's why he asked me to put a piece of leather there that I don't scratch it. So we have the stable core. No, there's a core. We have the layer, layer on the back. So it's a stable, stable, uh, stable belly, not a stable back. You can see it running here. When you look against the sun, then you see the glass layer here. Wait a second, that you see it maybe. There, you see it shining through there. You have the glass layer, the stable core running all the way through until here. That's so cool. What can I say? Packaging, bowstring sleeve description. Bowstring sleeve documentation, three points. Extra string maybe, you know, when you're safe. I would add always an extra string, because just in case one string gets damaged, then you need to stop shooting. So you have another one and then you can reorder. The next one would be nice and would be one point more. Handling this bow was surprisingly easy to string. I didn't expect that. I thought because of these sears and this shape and short and whatever would be tricky. It's totally not tricky. Even step through method is no problem whatsoever. So handling five. The build, of course, five. I mean, I, you, you saw already the details and I showed you everything. This bow is simply this is perfection for me. I mean, if I would be picky, I just failed here of the reinforcement. Hear that? There's the end of the twine. <laughs> just joking. So, five. Obviously, this is a perfect built bow. Uh, the basic feel of this bow is incredible. This handle is just, look at, look at this bump here. And look at this bump here, it's just, it, it melts into your hand. So this is, you hold it and it's part of you. So there's nothing like, it's simply there where it belongs. 
an extremely narrow aero pass, which I had to compensate for first, because we have a very low brace height. But due to this handle, the low brace height is not a problem. So this is totally not a big deal. And I never hit my arm even with six and a half inches. So very well done, Robert. I mean, he knows what he's doing. And I don't feel I'm not fast enough. It's one second there. One, two, three. You feel it for maybe four seconds in the handle, but it's very minimal. But of course, due to this design, the, 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 the oscillation translates a little, but it's not, it's barely feelable, so nothing. And of course, you feel a little the kick when you have these lightweight arrows. I shot the Sungo R2 light as 6.6, so minimum is 7.5, then it's fine. So five, obviously. I mean, it's obviously, but it's obviously. So, and the draw experience for this one, I'm not so happy. So this is 28. Then you feel the handle already a little bending. 29, 30, and to 31, I already need to force the bow, at least me, because then it's 60 pounds and maybe it's a little too heavy for me. So this 31, it might happen in the future, but right now I really don't see it happening. So I'm here at 28, 29, 30, and then it gets stiff. So maybe it's me because I'm too weak, or the bow is getting a little stiff, or the bow will flex a little when we shoot more. I mean, we have this with several bows. They need a few shots that they get simply a bit more flex and they start can happen to this one too. That's why for this, for now, Maxtro 32, I don't see that one. And you saw already in 28, the limbs already point really backwards. So this section is really bending. And I'm always a little scared. I'm a scary cat. So for this, I give you four, because the draw is very smooth to draw, but up to 29 inches and then it the draw curve goes a little up and 31 goes extremely up. So mm, it's nice, don't get me wrong, but I have to be picky because otherwise draw. Hmm? Shooting experience on the other side, this bow performs like a charm. This narrow arrow pass combined with this handle, the brace height, the, the, the short length of the bow, and it kicks the arrows away like Bam! Stamps them into the target. It's, it's a nice feel. So this bow feels incredible in your hand. So the shooting experience with this bow is amazing. So I would give you almost six points, but we only have five. Gives you 27 points. And price value 450 pounds is 500, whatever, I don't know now, euros is a number for this bow, but you know the quality of Paragon, you know the knowledge of Robert, which he puts into his bows and the materials. And when you add all this together and you see this shape in a laminated bow, I mean, I almost didn't think that it's possible to build a bow like this in laminated. You know, when you make this out of resin or composite, easier but with a laminated bow and you get this performance out of it then even 500 euros fine by me i said i would go with the rider because it looks almost the same not that pretty like this one but it draws 34 inches at least easy so i can go with my 32 33 inch draw and i'm happy i don't max the bow out it gives me always a safer feel i don't like maxing bows out so when you see a 28 the limbs always go already back here you draw more than they go inwards, then you have a lot of pressure here. Of course, the limb is tapered here. So you have a nice bending section still, but fully worth the price, five points. What can I say? <clears throat> I mean, it's Paragon and you get quality and really has knowledge. And when you see that even with this design, you know, we had other Han and whatever with this shape, in this direction, when you did this, they already snapped. This one is stiff. 
and it's still it's a straight lake. <laughs> Let's look at this. Step through a shot and I twisted the bow and whatever. This bow is straight. So for this, wow. So I'm not sure if a beginner wants to spend 500 euros or 450 pounds directly, but even on horseback, when you think a 30 pound bow or something, I think this bow in 30 pounds, 35, maybe 40, will perform a little nicer than this one. So I think with 60 pounds, I don't know, at full draw, maybe you reach a little the limit of the material already. So, but if you would have this in 35, 40 pounds at 28, I think it would be 35 or 28, then you are at 50, or not completely 50 at full, and then I think this draw is more smooth, and then this is a really an, an enjoyable bow. To do. What do you want? You want to sit on the bow? Then no, no, sit on it. And go away. <laughs> it's an enjoyable bow, and it's not too heavy for what it is. It's really balanced. The only thing when you have it in your hand and you move it, you feel it, so you have here a little, oh, yeah. so you, you feel that there are long, heavy sears, but it's a beautiful bow. I like, Robert, what you're doing. It's incredible. I mean, how he does things is, you know that he's really thinking, thinking and thinking again and testing and testing and testing again. And then he comes up with a product like this, which is incredible. If you have the money, and this should be your beginner bow, you have no problem. This is easy to string, easy to handle, easy to shoot. And I think in a 30 pound version, this is uh, wow to shoot. Then you have, can use very lightweight arrows with it. That's all for me today. Training in a second. Really, really beautiful. Thank you very much, uh, Robert, that you do this for my patrons, that you send us this bow. And especially so quickly, I know that you are completely full and but it's, it, I really appreciate that you build it so quickly. Others needed to wait a little longer for their bow. So really thank you, Robert, for that. Thank you, patrons, for being so awesome. You are the most awesome people on the planet. You know that. You are freaking legends, I would say. I mean, every archer is already a legend, but patron archers are the pure legends. So thank you, patrons. So. I, I wanted to do it quickly that maybe this bow will be under the Christmas tree of one of my patrons. So we will do the questions very soon and then the giveaway very soon. And I hope I manage to ship this bow next week already. So maybe you have it under your Christmas tree. And thank you all very much for watching. I catch you in the next one.